All right, now that was some Karen Superwoman White, or Karen White sees the day. We got Karen White on the Midnight Hour Radio Show, News Talk Radio, 1490 WERE. Hey, Karen. Yeah. Hey, how you doing? Hey, Karen, how you doing? What's going I'm on? I'm doing better. I'm, I'm going to tell you something, good. Karen. I, I got... had a hell of a week, but um, that is good. I, good. I just got you? tingles on me like, like goosebumps. <laughs> Thinking about to <laughs> hair and white on the line. I ain't gonna lie to you. The man ain't got no hair and it's sticking up on his head. Now, how you do that, Karen? Oh, Karen, how you do I that? I like that. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, yo? How you been? What? Man, I've been getting it. That's what I've been. Is that right? I, I looked up and I was like, oh my God, it's going on two years since I started this grind again. But, you know, I'm excited because I love it and. You know, know, it's 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 in you. I tried to tried to let it go, but you know, eventually. It, nah, you know, nah, ain't nobody you, letting you go. I heard you've been doing a lot in Japan, Karen. Tell us about that. Oh, Japan, man, they they're the best fans. You know why? Because unlike the states, they're very loyal, and um, you know, it's like I feel like I'm Michael Jackson when I go to Japan. <laughs> <I'm serious. laughs> they, I know that's right. They do. They, they meet do. you at the airport. Yeah. You know, they bring you flowers and gifts, and they're just mm-hmm. amazing people. Yeah. And uh, I'm really, really blessed to have them as a fan base and, Absolutely. you know, able to work. Absolutely. So do you feel like an R&B diva? Do I feel like an R&B yeah, diva? Yeah, because a lot of people, still, you know, feel, they proclaim well, it. It depends on diva. See, when I say diva, I mean, I know how to be a diva, but I, I don't really say I'm a diva because, see, I'm, I'm grinding, and this is me doing it. You know, I have a team, and it's me. I'm the record company, I'm the artist, and, you know, I don't, I don't have a, you know, I can't really say diva because I don't have anybody writing a check. Everything I'm <laughs> everything I'm doing right now is from Karen White Enterprises, so. Okay. Not, <laughs> I would say a boss. <laughs> right. Well, I'll tell you what, Karen. People look at you as an entertainment icon. Karen White on the Midnight Hour Radio Show. People I know for a fact look at you as an entertainment icon. I got to ask you, I know you've probably been asked this question a million times. What inspired the Superwoman song? I know that's right. What inspired <laughs> it? I know that's right. Well, what inspired it actually was, you know, at that time, it, it, that song is, you know, such a blessing because, you know, that was written by <clears throat> Babyface in L.A. I didn't write the song. And um, oh, really? I'm just blessed that they thought I was a Superwoman because I don't think I was nowhere near it at that time. Um, I didn't really know what love was, had to live life for real yet. And, okay. you know, today when I sing it, it has such a different meaning. Right, but right. that song really separated me from the Janet Jacksons and the Nessa Williams. Right, absolutely. And so that song really was, you know, just, you know, about a, you know, the strength of a woman and just going through something, persevering and telling the guy, you know, tell him, don't take me for granted. So, you know, I'm really blessed that, you know, that song is really um, – classic you know and i had no idea you know you don't know you're just doing the work and uh i wish i did know i'd be in the smithsonian if i could call it (laughs) oh okay all right cool um speaking of that the janet jackson thing and all that well who have you been compared to because i'm getting the feeling you've been compared to whitney houston no but that would be please whitney is wasn't incredible. Come on, we know she was just. And so was Karen. Her voice is just amazing, um, powerful. You know, I, I'm. I don't know because with one thing about me, there's different sides. I'm. You know, that's why it was kind of hard to put me in a box, and even for myself, like Love Thought is probably was one of my favorite uh, songs because I love the lower texture of my voice, and especially on this album, I'm singing. You know, in that texture throughout the whole, pretty much throughout the whole album, but. Um, but there was also, you know, a, you know, a falsetto and a high side of me, which is pop side. So I've been, you know, I've been called the Black Madonna. I've, I've you know, kind of all over the place. So, well, you know what? But, Speaking you, of that, Karen, you you got a mm-hmm? new song called Heaven. Oh yeah, Heaven. I mean, I want to roll. Yeah. To me. Oh, yeah, I love just being love. You know, it's like I wish, I wish okay. I could really sing that song right now and mean that because I'm, I'm not in a relationship, but 
But that's what that song describes and what really being in love is. It's just letting yourself go. And, and that's a big part for people because, you know, it's, you've been hurt. And so you don't want to trust. But when you, when you, when you, when you feel you lost control of your soul, yeah, when you feel you lost control of your soul and you let yourself go. Well, let, 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 let the audience hear one minute of heaven real quick. And then okay. I, then I want to I want to talk to you about about the song and how you produced it and what inspired that particular musical movement. Okay. Karen White on the Midnight Hour Radio Show, WERE 1490 AM. Karen, tell us about that song, Heaven. If I really told you the truth about that song, you probably would look at me like, what you say? <laughs> but uh, I'll no, say a little No, I'll that's okay, little Karen. Little song. Tell, us, song, um, tell us the truth if you want <laughs> to. I don't know if I should tell this story. <clears throat> but actually, okay, my uh, up is girl that he cheated on me with, she actually wrote a lot of this, a lot of the chords. And um, I changed the verses, but I love the song, you know, so much that I, you know, that's one thing about me. I'm fair. I'm a Libra, right? So I'm looking at the scales of justice. I'm like, but it's a hit. I think the song is incredible. And um, so I had to give her a pass. And, you know, I love the, I love the lyric and the melody. And then I kind of changed it up on the verses because I wanted to make it kind of have an old school feel to it and um that's uh you know also what i did is you know we wrote you know with my producers and you know we just this song was kind of done like three different ways and that's one thing when you when you're an artist and you know what you're not that's one thing and, and a producer because i know what i can sing and what i can and what is believable for me so so um yeah that's that's <laughs> that's what that song is about it's just hey letting yourself go being in love and and that's a feeling. I mean, we all need that. I'm, I'm looking for that. Well, you know what, Karen? Uh, I heard that you had another song called Sister, Sister. Yeah, this guy, he just inspired all kind of songs, huh? My ex, yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is the love letter. And Sister, Sister is the love letter to my sisters saying, you know, we got to stop, you know, hating, hating on each other, tripping with each other as far as just, the disconnect that's happening with women and to uplift each other and support one another more because um, I actually had went through another situation with a female and we became really good friends and it was, you know, instead of, there was a positive thing that happened. So instead of us, uh, instead of her, us being mad at each other, we wound up checking the dude and he was kicked to the curb. So the thing there is, is that there's, there's a lot of blessings when you <laughs> When you unify with your sisters, and I'm trying to say, you know, it's really not a fight against each other because, you know, we're, we really want the same thing and we're from the same place. Okay. And that's my love letter. Cool. Hey, hey, Karen, let me ask you something. When you in the mm -hmm. studio, when you in the studio putting a song together, arranging a song, what have you, do you feel like the old Karen, or the, not the old Karen, but the old style Karen is trying to get in the way of the new style Karen? You said, well, I feel like the old gets in the way. 
No, because you know why? I hadn't, when I approached this record, you got to understand that I hadn't sang. I had been away from the industry for 17 years. Somebody was blowing me up in their earth and I'm trying to talk. Sorry, I'm getting texts coming in. Um, and so when I approached this, it was about, it was just the new Karen. So it wasn't even so much like I'm trying to do anything. It was very organic. And, and that's what I love about it is because it's who I am today. And the fact that I am, you know, I, I'm not dated and my world is, you know, I, I don't, I'm not that kind of artist. I really know what's up. You know, I love hip hop. I love all kinds of music. So for me, it was just about making sure that I stayed in my lane. So I can't listen to people like Beyonce, you know, that are, which I feel like there's just too many people trying to do her stock, her style. But, you know, she's so incredible. I have to, like, stay away from artists that I feel like I could mimic. That's how I stray true to my sound. And I really love, like, male artists. Like, so you'll hear me listening to Al Green. Right. Um, you, and, you know, uh, Maxwell, you know, but uh, I really, you know, just try to make sure that I'm right. here away. Well, let's that's, let's, that's let's listen part. to one minute of your song, Sister, Sister, and bring you right back for the last five minutes of your interview. And let's talk about it because it, right. it sounds like it's something powerful, that song, Sister, Sister, by Karen White on the Midnight Hour Radio Show. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome... Miss Karen White. Thank you. <laughs> Gosh, it's so good to be back. I hope you enjoy this song. It's really dear to me. Let's go deep. This is dedicated to all my sisters out there. And wake up, sisters Cause ain't nobody tripping About what you got on Say I should have you back Hey, you should have mine We've been fighting for too long Don't you think it's time Sister, sister Sister, sister, can you hear me? me? Me and you from the same place. And this ain't and how it should be. be. Sister, sister. Oh, no, no, no. Sisters, can you hear me? Me and you from the same place. And this ain't how it should be. The same man that you on you you know he cheated on me too but instead of checking him well you know what we do it's all to the good when you know that you should but ain't it such a shame how we cheat the blame Sister, sister, Karen White, W E R E fourteen ninety News Talk Radio, uh, AM, the Midnight Hour Radio Show. Karen, tell us about that song, Sister, Sister. Well, I think I told you it's a you know it's a love letter, and that was actually a the acoustic version, which is um, me just in the studio singing it, one take, um, and um, one just a raw raw version. Just kind of going back to the days of, you know, when we used to, you know, Franklin and artists like, you know, used to go in and just sing. So that was what that was about. I just we wanted to do a raw version and um, actually change the key. It was a lower key. Too, so. Right. You know what's crazy? Uh, we You got so many fans that our engineer want to ask you a question about a song. His name is Tristan. Hi, um, Miss White. I wanted to ask you. Um, Trenton. Tristan. What was your inspiration Tristan. for the song Romantic, and how, what was your reaction when it went to number one on the Hot 100? Hello? Yeah, he, his name is Tristan. He asked you, what was your inspiration for writing the song Romantic, and what 
how was your reaction when it went to number one on the Hot One One Hundred? Oh, okay. The inspiration was Terry Lewis. Um, you couldn't tell me nothing at that time. I was I was in love and you know just married and it's time to get romantic. Was you know what I felt and um, that song. Actually, there was a a romance me and a dance me side, and that was part of the dance me side. And and when it went to number one again, you know just grateful man because the same is hard. It's, it's you know, it's, it's uh, nothing but a blessing because, you know, just because you do music and you have great producers, that, that doesn't mean because Terry and Jimmy produce that and I co-produce, it doesn't mean that you still have success. So every time, um, I just never, you know, never took that for granted, being, you know, having success and always grateful. That, that, that really is interesting. sounds like you really have had just an amazing collection of hits. It really is. You there? Impressive. I'm here. I'm, I'm I can't on. hear you. I'm sorry. Sounds like you really had an impressive range of hits. That really is cool that um, that that Terry Jam was an inspiration for you with that song. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah, definitely, definitely. And, and the great thing about it was um, this was the first time that I actually, you know, wrote with them. Because when I was – I feel like I was in training um, – working with the incredible, you know, face in L.A. and learning from them, but I didn't write with them. So I definitely always, you know, at the studio, I did a lot of their background sessions for even other artists besides myself. I would always do their session work. And so just really in training. And so when I got with Jimmy and Terry, which are totally different producers, they like for the artists to be more involved, where face and L.A., they, like, you know, Faith already knew the songs, and he would, you know, be inspired by the artists. But Terry and Jimmy, they actually wanted the artists to be a big part of the records. And so, and I'm really, um, I was excited to do it because I came out, most people don't know that know this, but when uh, my first uh, introduction to the industry was writing on a Stephanie Mills song, I actually co-wrote a song called Automatic Passion. And then I also, you know, wrote with Richard Marks and on Johnny Gill. Um, I wrote stuff uh Rochelle Pharrell's first single till you come back to me so I really uh you know I was really happy to write and I wrote with Carol Bear Sager and Burt Bacharach so being in Los Angeles um just afforded me a lot of uh, opportunities and I wouldn't change you know my childhood for anything and also with Switch um when I was 16 years old I started um uh one the drummer for Switch had put a group together and I was in the group and and then from there, Don Cornelius with O'Brien, who I don't know if you guys remember him. He was an oh, awesome Oh, yeah, vocalist. he was hot. I remember that. You and I. Yeah, you and I and, and Love Light and Gigolo and Freaky. And, you know, I toured with him, opened up with Cameo. So really just been a lot, been around a lot of incredible musicians and artists. And um, so it was just, an, you know, I was just, just blessed. And also, you know, I remember calling this story, you know, Prince, because, at first, uh, I came to Minnesota to work with Prince, and I actually wound up working with Jimmy and Terry. So it was just a funny story because um, only I, I'm a, like kind of a quirky kind of person. I call myself Mrs. Magoo because I can just do things and, and just have all kind of darts and things coming around me, and I have no idea that I'm messing things up. So I remember coming to Minnesota, and I said, Terry, can you take me to Paisley Park? This is what I did a duet with um, him on a song for a guy named Michael Jeffries called Not Through Being With You. And so, you know, most people would say, why would you have Terry Lewis take you to Prince's studio to try to work with him? Because everybody is so territorial and, you know, men and their egos and different producers. But so I, you know, met with Prince and, and, you know, he could, he didn't really, we didn't wind up working together musically that time because he was working on the Batman soundtrack. But he's also, you know, of course, a favorite of mine, just, as a total artist and entertainer. So you'll probably hear a lot of that, especially in my style, like on Secret Rendezvous, and, you know, those were kind of some of my inflections, and, you know, of course, everybody loves Prince. So. Right, right. <laughs> well, we got to roll it talking. down, Karen, <laughs> but i tell you one thing. If you want to come back on the Midnight Hour radio show, feel free to do so. Yeah, we would love to have you. I'm trying to tell Definitely. you. Well, of course I want to come back. I, I would love to come back. And I want to just say also that I have, um, I'm acting now, and I have a sitcom coming out. Ooh. Look for it this fall. It's called Basketball Wife. Not the not the reality show. It's actually a sit, scripted sitcom where I play 
a basketball wife. Her name is Kim Banks, and it's an amazing cast, and uh, we'll be uh, coming soon. So I just want to well, thank you for having me. Well, let us bring you back on. Let us bring you back on. on and talk to you guys about whatever else you want to talk about. Yeah, let's let's yeah. talk about that new show and your new album. But thank you for oh. calling the Midnight Hour Radio Show right now, Karen, and hopefully we can have you back sometime in the fall and we can talk about your new hit show, That's Basketball right. Wife, Karen White, on the Midnight thank Hour you Radio guys. Show. And we thank all you, love Karen. you. We love you, girl. Oh, I love you, too, and thank you. I really appreciate it. It means a lot. I'm Bye-bye. trying to tell you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right, we're going to let Smooth Gotti.